My name is Raymond Moriyama. I'm also the architect of the Ontario Science Centre. We, we had a, a kind of a dream that my wife and I had from university days. What can we do that we're capable of doing that maybe will cast a new light, you know, on education, society, and culture of Canada, and, and do a transformative architecture that could lead to improvement to, towards, uh, towards democracy equality, inclusion. So that was my aim of, you know, using the architectural sort of uh, projects to advance our society in Canada. I spent time in uh, Sokan, in, in a place called Bay Farm. And uh, what really brought me back, I hated Canada at that time. I hated Japan. I hated my community. And uh, because, uh, you know, I had a bad burn at that time. And, and uh, there were only two public baths, so, uh, you know, when I went to bath, everybody would say, oh, he's uh, diseased and, and don't touch him and all that. So I used to go to, so I decided, you know, it's better to bathe in an ice cold, uh, you know, Slocan River than to you know, fight hot tears. So I went over this mountain and to the river. Then I start to see this beautiful sort of uh, nature that surrounded us. So that started to bring me back, you know, thinking, you know, this country has such beautiful things, you know, and that you could trust nature perhaps more than society. <laughs> so I started uh, making this uh, platform, uh, observation point. Well, when I started this, I found nature so beautiful that it forced me to get into my first foray into architecture. I built a tree house and so that I wouldn't be caught by the RCMP, I decided I would build it by myself. And for, uh, for you know, 13 year old to build this uh, Tree house without tools and uh, uh, material was not easy. Um, it, but it was done. And when it was finished, I thought it was, it was the most beautiful thing. Um, and I had to make sure that it was camouflaged so that the RCMP and people then see it. So it was, uh, well, I thought it was nearly invisible. I never got caught. Uh, but I learned about orientation and which way the breeze was blowing and which way the, the blast of cold air was moving and, and open space and the view and so on. So it was a really, a, a first sort of uh, understanding of how you work with, uh, you know, build with nature. And when it was finished, it, it was uh, amazingly wonderful. Not physically, but it was uh, a place of solitude. It was a place of learning. It was my university, you know. I could never do architecture uh, without a sense of love in my heart. And by eliminating my hate about the community, uh, about Canada, 
I, I wouldn't be able to move forward. And I guess I was intelligent enough at 13 to start realizing that. And, and so I guess I had the benefit of, uh, first of all, uh, knowing I wanted to be an architect at a young age, and that saved me out about my future as a, you know, as an architect uh, and being able to maybe do something and, and do something that may be a little different from other people and with maybe some understanding about other things that maybe architects don't understand. So after saying hello and, uh, and all that, he said, uh, well, you know our centennial project? I said, <laughs> I'm sharing my ignorance. I said, I didn't know um, the province had a centennial project. Oh, he said, <laughs> he said well, that may be the reason why you're one of the very few architects who didn't uh, send a letter in showing interest. And I told him I, I never send any letters, you know, sort of pushing for work. Then he said, are you interested? And I said, no, sir. <laughs> and he, he was, I guess, stunned a bit. And, uh, and he said, why? He said, too much responsibility. And uh, I have a small office that I'm happy with. And so it's uh, not the time I, I would like to do this job. And so I said, oh, well, what is the job? <laughs> you know, what is the... He said, uh, well, it's uh, some sort of a science center. And uh, you know, we, we named it Center of uh, Science and Technology. And, you know, my imagination running wild. Oh boy, if the province ever used that as the official name to the public, the media's going to kill the problem, you know, because the, the, the acronym will be COST. Yeah. And then the minister said, uh, well, Raymond, we're looking for a, a young architect talented, imagination, and lots of guts. He said, and that's you. So I thought, gee, well, architects are sort of uh, naming me, and, and they seem to be, you know, what the minister seems to be convinced. So I said, OK, well, in that case, uh, I'll, I'll try. And I thought to myself, I think I'm not running into a big storm, but also an opportunity to maybe start tying the idea of the past, today and tomorrow, and uh, maybe even an idea of tying the East, the philosophy of the East, with uh, our science and technology. I guess, uh, you know, I always sort of, sort of uh, thank, you know, lack of time as our, you know, not our enemy, but our friend. And the lack of time meant that, you know, we had to push along, everybody had to move together as fast as they could. And sometimes they had to agree with us when, because they had no time to give us an alternative. So uh, that began, it became a, a sort of a, sort of a direction. And, uh, and of course that care, you know, the whole idea of hands-on came about. If you look at the Ontario Science Center, it's always in a unit of 20,000. 
square feet. And uh, in between, we always expose people to to outside, not only to reflect on what they've seen and sort of think about what they want to see, but always in touch with nature. Because what we were saying, look, the trillium is also a symbol of man, nature, and science. Without nature, there is no science. And without science, there's no understanding. When we started the Ontario Science Center, there was no uh, regulation or law about the handicap. What I realized was that we we're going to deal with people in wheelchair. I rented a wheelchair and 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 strapped myself down to see, you know. So uh, you know, if I then strap myself down. You know, I could get up and do things, and and I find the, you know, like a two-inch rise, very difficult. You know, I guess uh, at a moment uh, when you have to change your philosophy into actual form, uh, what I did was I said, okay, what I'm trying to do is translate the past the Oriental Confucius saying into today, hopefully it'll move towards the future. To do that, what composition do I use? What I did, and this may be a bit arbitrary, is to use the Japanese character heart, the heart. Uh, heart in Japanese, uh, it's like the center of all thing. And it has five strokes to it. It's not four, not six, it's five. If you look at the Ontario Science Center, there are five strokes to it. But in between each stroke, there's a kind of a bridge, okay? First is the long bridge. The second one is the, uh, is the escalator going down. And then there are shorter bridges between uh, the other units. So if you look at it simply from the sky, it, it makes a, a symbolic heart. And, and a couple of weeks ago, I was informed that the Ontario Science Center has now spawned over 2,000 you know, uh, institutions and museums based on its model. And, and that's worldwide. So, you know, it, it had its impact. And, now, I guess uh, Ontario Science Center is facing a new challenge, you know, what to do and next. And, and it's kind of interesting. I think I know what I would do, but, but you know, that's not for me to say right now. <laughs>